Hello folks, this is Sue Bell from NetworkEmpire.com and today we're looking at the filters for killer keywords and we've got we want to get into the nitty-gritty of what's behind the filters today. So we're going to talk about the advanced features and how you can make up your own filters and what everything means. Alright, so I'm going to talk about the types of the tokens first. There's two different types. There's comparison and then there's boolean. So the comparison ones are what you see right here. We've got the statistically improbable phrase. I just pulled it up. I haven't messed with it yet. So, um, so for example, you've got Google competing pages broad. The broad competing pages is less than a million. And keyword is pure diverse. All right, so keyword is pure diverse. So this is a comparison right here. And this one is a Boolean. Okay, so this doesn't compare anything to anything. We're simply saying that we want the keyword to be pure diverse. All right, so there's just a few Boolean examples. Hang on a second, let me find it. Okay, so these right here are the only Boolean tokens there are. Keyword is long tail, keyword is C, keyword is partial diverse, and keyword is pure diverse. So all of those are standalone, the same way as this one is, and it doesn't need to have like a less than or greater than or anything else associated with it. And pretty much everything else on this list are all comparison tokens. These are all um, comparison tokens up here, and you can compare them either to a value or you can compare them to the seed tokens. So let's just take a look at, at how that goes. This is an example of where you're comparing the competing number of pages to an exact number, but I can also just as easily compare it to the seed term. So in other words, I can come down here to seed competing pages broad, and I can say that I want the results for this to be less than the number of competing pages for the seed term. What that does is it makes your filter much more flexible. Um, you can take a filter like that and go from one size market to another size market and it's always going to be germane to whatever the seed keyword term is. So let's just look at this for a second. We've made a change here. We had eight keywords before. Now when we apply this we have zero keywords. So clearly by doing that we're making um, the set so small that it doesn't bring anything back. All right, so let's just look a little bit further. In fact, let's change this back to a million so that we've actually got um, our eight keywords back again. All right, good. Um, and then let's see. There's there's nothing else that you can compare Larry to other than a number because <clears throat> excuse me there's not an actual value for the seed term I don't believe no the seed term might not be exactly a hundred but it's gonna be really really high so um so there's not a seed term for that so so let's dig a little bit deeper into what exactly it is that we can do here so obviously we've talked we've talked now about booleans you can combine multiple tokens into a single filter you can see here we've actually got three You've got this as one, and then we use an and to tag it to this one. So that means that the results of this has to meet this part, and it has to meet that part. And there's another one here, and it has to meet this here, okay? So it has to meet all three of those criteria in order for the keyword to be returned. Now, there are other things that you can use besides an and. We can also use an or, right? So don't know where I have that in here, but I'm sure that I do. So if I change this, for example, into an OR, then what I'm saying is that it has to meet this criteria. You don't need the parentheses, but they help me so that I can remember what order it is that, that I want the filter to actually be calculated, because otherwise you could say um, you, you could say that it needs to be either this or this and the other one, right? So that's going to change the, the way that the filter gets calculated significantly. So that brings us 11 keywords. If I put this here, 
them up like that and get rid of this. It brought us 11 keywords before and now it's going to bring us 138. So you can see how when you're using ands and ors it's good to be explicit about how you want the filter to go. Alright, so that's combining things into one filter. Lots and lots of examples that we could go into on that. Um, and then I think it's just a matter of kind of getting used to what all of the different variables mean. So keyword Larry, this is how relevant the um, the keyword, each keyword in the project is to the seed term. Uh, that's on a scale of 0 to 100. 100 being most relevant and 0 being the least. Um, Google SPD exact, I've actually got them here. Um, natural searches, this is the cost per click, this in broad, this is the cost per click in phrase. So then you can get creative with things like, let's just get rid of this entirely, let's do something like um, has cost. Alright, so this is looking at broad or phrase is greater than zero. So that's where you can come in here and you can use, okay, so both of those are cost per click. I can also say and uh, clicks per day is greater than one, right? So you can um, you can mix and match like that. So that's going to give you both traffic and cost. Some kind of cost, either phrase cost or broad cost, because sometimes you have people bidding in one way and not bidding in another way. So, um, so that's how you put your filter stuff together. That's how you use the, the keyword tokens. These are going to apply to each keyword in the list. These are going to be replaced by whatever the value is for the actual seed term. And these are the booleans. And then your comparison operators, you've got either greater than or greater than or equal to, um, less than, less than or equal to. You've got things that you can do like pluses and minuses. So you can do something like, um, uh, we can say this plus that is greater than zero, right? So that means that um, that's another way of saying that this has to be or that has to be greater than zero. It's a little bit quicker way of saying it. Um, we can also subtract, we can multiply, we can divide, modulo, exponent. Like that's where it really starts to get kind of crazy because you can do some really advanced stuff. Um, the sky is really the limit when you start thinking about all of the different ways that you can take the basic keyword data and manipulate it. You can look for things that have got, um, let's just come back here for a second, you can look for things that have got maybe YouTube videos and they're showing cost, but you can also look for things that have got like um, a percentage of YouTube videos to competing pages, right? Where uh, if the percentage isn't um, is below a particular threshold, then maybe there's an opportunity to get the YouTube video in on the front of the SERPs page. Uh, ideas like that. So you can manipulate this data to any extent imaginable, which I think is really one of the understated power tools of killer keywords. All right, that's kind of an introduction to this. We might come back later with some more advanced features. This is Sue Bell from Network Empire, demoing the filters in killer keywords.